Tomorrow, guys, I am trying to fly 10,000 plus miles on a 27 hour long flight that cost me $2,700 to get me to a country that very well might not even let me in. <laughs> oh, this could go so wrong. Uh, welcome to the vlog. Now, if you've been watching the vlog for a while, you may have noticed that there is a central figure missing from things. That is my girlfriend, Anastasia, who in early April, when the borders closed here in South Africa, repatriated back to Canada, who had also just recently closed their border. Originally, I thought, okay, no big deal. Once the US gets their shit together, Canada will reopen the border and I'll be able to join her. Wow, as we know, the US haven't gotten their stuff together. Coronavirus. 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 Which means that I haven't seen Anastasia in four months. And that's what this whole thing is about. I'm traveling 10,000 plus miles, 27 hours on a plane, and close to $3,000 to see Anastasia. And they say romance is dead. It's the classic Romeo and Juliet love story, with the US being the Romulets and Canada being the Capulets. But unlike Romeo and Juliet, we're not gonna sneak around in the middle of the night. Instead, we're gonna do things legally, or something called a common law partnership which states that if you are a couple and have been living together for more than a year, you qualify as legal partners and can therefore come to Canada right now and be reunited with your loved one, which is perfect because Stasia and I have been dating and living together for over two years. But here's the catch. You have to be able to prove it. And for most couples, it wouldn't be a big deal proving that you've lived together with someone for a year. You'd have things like joint lease agreements. You'd have maybe car payments, electricity and Wi-Fi and water bills, you know, things normal adults have. But Stasia and I, as you know, don't live a normal relationship in that we stay in one place and that's where our lives unfold. We've instead had our life unfold across continents and countries. That is hard to prove. And so what it's gonna come down to is whoever the border agent that I get, hopefully they understand it and they get it. So now you are caught up to speed and from here on out, I'm gonna be flying by the seat of my pants. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if I'm gonna get in, if I'm not gonna get in. Let's try to go from South Africa and Cape Town to Vancouver and Canada. Yes. Hey. Awesome. You can come around and talk and then take your baggage to the front bus. Okay. okay. Okay, I made it through the health screening. I have officially gone through security. I have my boarding ticket. <laughs> and I'm not sure if now that gets me on the flight or if the flight crew is gonna check me more thoroughly because no one really checked me back there so far. So good. Step number one of getting to Vancouver is a success. I've gone through all the security checks and I've made it. I'm at my gate right now, but let me tell you, it feels weird. This is just completely different than any airport experience I've ever gone through. Nobody's here, none of the stores are open, the lights aren't even on. They're like on emergency power mode, so it's completely dark. So it just feels super post-apocalyptic, but I made it through stage number one, so things are going good. Thank you. This plane is packed. I don't think there's a single empty seat in the entire plane. But we made it. Welcome to Amsterdam. So, that was about an 11 hour flight that had zero social distancing, but on a full flight, not really much you can do. Uh, but right now we are in Amsterdam. It is 8.30 in the morning. And the best part about being in Amsterdam for six hours is that you get to go to the shops and buy authentic Amsterdam cheese. I have a pesto verde cheese, wasabi cheese, because Stasia loves wasabi. And then I have a classic one-year-old Gouda. 
all of which I think Stace is gonna freak out about. But there's another reason besides cheese that makes Amsterdam important to me right now, and that is it's the first test of whether or not I can get into Canada. From what I've heard, there's gonna be someone at the gate checking passports, visas, documentation, making sure that you have everything you need that verifies you can get on this flight to head to Canada. I have this folder here full of 60 pages worth of documents proving that Stasia and I are common law, but I have no idea how thorough they're gonna be. They could look at my documents for two seconds and say, hey, you're good. They might pull me aside and wanna look through every single piece of paper, or there might not even be someone there. Honestly, I have no idea. Oh. All right, moment of truth. United States. Yes. Do you have an uh, permit? Yes. Yes. It's a, it's a common law. Yeah, yeah. Common law. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, I made it on the plane. All the guy did was a very basic, do you have a reason and a form to prove you can go to Canada as a US citizen, very informal, so it shows me that the real official check is gonna be at the border. So now I'm on a plane, which is awesome, and the next step is getting to Vancouver. plane I am officially in Vancouver uh, but now I'm gonna go to border security and of course I can't film any of the border stuff for obvious reasons so wish me luck and I'll see you guys in a little bit As you can see, Stage is here. Woo! Dogs are here. Woo! We made it to Canada. I made it to Canada. It was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. Honestly, like we built this the whole thing up to be like, they're gonna be like flashlight in the face, like, why are you here? What are your reasons? Show me your documentation. I had this folder full of 60 pages worth of stuff. Stage had a similar folder in case they called her or something. And at the end of the day, they didn't ask for any of it. Uh, they didn't look at really any of my documents, oh, except for this one, which is a statutory declaration of common law. The rest of it was super easy. The lady at the border check asked me all of three questions and let me in. Everything we read online, and there's like a dozen or more articles, said that there were people that were just left and right getting turned away at the border. And I think a lot of them were maybe driving to the border, and maybe that was the big difference. But honestly, it was... It was a piece of cake. Easy and, peasy. Yeah, and I was actually almost almost like weirdly hoping it was gonna be more dramatic than it was for the vlog's sake, I guess, but more the story is I'm here. Woo! And this is where I'm gonna be for the foreseeable future. And that is where I'm gonna end this video. I'm in Canada, left Cape Town, and we got Stasia, we got dogs, we, we got, got everything. summertime. <laughs> um, so if you like this video, give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. But the show is over. The vlog's done. We're in Canada. I'll we'll see, see you next time. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace. Say goodbye, Doug. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Those passengers recently arrived on KLM Royal Dutch Airlines from Amsterdam. Happy? I'm so relieved. That was so easy. That was like. Oh, I'm so relieved. Fuck yeah.